official flip lesson. Uh, this is our first little adventure here and obviously your goal is to watch this video and take notes where appropriate. Uh, I should tell you that uh, we are starting in section 1-1 in the pre-calc book uh, and it's about modeling and solving equations. Uh, modeling basically means uh, summarizing the numerical information from a situation, uh, it could be a real world situation or some kind of uh, book situation, into some kind of mathematical structure, which could mean uh, numerical, which would be like a table of values, uh, summarizing everything into a table of values. Uh, could mean uh, symbolic, which typically refers to some kind of an equation or function. And it could mean graphical, uh, which shockingly enough would be a graph. Uh, a lot of times we do all of those. Uh, we might put things into a table to facilitate graphing and then from the graph we can see what kind of equation to make and uh, so they all interact uh, back and forth. Uh, so we use graphs to see the kind of relationship, we use data techniques like statistics and things like that uh, to uh, uh, make whatever kind of conclusions we're trying to make. Okay, uh, We're going to go through just a couple of examples to try and see how this works and I'm going to be trying to emphasize moving between uh, graphs and new numbers and back and forth and that's kind of a big deal so and that'll be a big focus of this section as well okay so uh, this is from page 75 it is a homework problem or uh, part of the exercises in our uh, our pre-calculus book and so uh, it says refer to the graph below which uh, sh which happens to show the minimum and average salaries in Major League Baseball over the same 18-year period. Uh, this 18-year period is probably a bit back since this is uh, copyright 2001 so it's it's been a little while so um, and we're going to kind of go through the questions that are in here and uh, and so if, if you have your book, you can refer to it, and if you don't, that's fine. I, I'll be reading. Uh, so the question, first question is, which, which of these is which? In other words, which one is uh, the average and which one is the minimum salary uh, for each of these? And if you hear clicking, that's just me uh, doing stuff on the board. So which graph is for average and which one's for minimum? Well, just... Minimum, obviously, would have to be lower than the average. Think about when you add up numbers and divide. It's kind of a typical or center number. Uh, so, so this would have to be the minimum set of values. And the other one would have to be the average set of values. And so, um, you know, sometimes in math things are very clear cut. And sometimes we have to use the T word where we actually have to think. And most people are not excited about that thinking thing. Okay, uh, uh, this is number uh, 20 now on page 75 after Peter Uberoth's resignation uh, and the commissioner, uh, he was the baseball commissioner in 1988 and his successor's untimely death in 89. The team owners broke free of previous restrictions and started uh, being more competitive uh, in terms of salaries. It says, identify where the 1990 salaries appear on the graph and explain how you can spot them. So what the question you have to be asking in your head, what are you looking for? What's this saying? And so, you know, what we're looking at, you know, minimum salaries don't seem to be changing all that much. So we're going to focus in on these average salaries, and, and you want to kind of look at them and say, what's going on with those? What, what's changing? What, you know, so as I'm looking at this, I'm saying, you know, we have a pretty clear similar pattern going on right here and then somewhere in here there is a big spike so I, as I look at this I'm kind of focusing you know right in this area and I want to say somewhere around year 9 or 10 would be that 1990 number does that make sense um, so somewhere in there is where uh, salary started to, to take a turn something happened Okay, so, so something happened, and it does make sense to me uh, that it is, a, as the um, problem suggests, that this would be where the restrictions were basically gone. Okay, and then in 2020, uh, sorry, 21, the owners attempted to halt the un uncontrolled spending by proposing a salary cap, which prompted a player's strike in 94. The strike caused the 95 season to be shortened, left many fans angry. 
So identify where the 95 salaries appear on the graph and explain how you can spot them. So again, we're, we're thinking at this point. And, and so again, if, if we were thinking uh, originally that this is about 90, 1990 and these are years now, does it, uh, it ought to make sense then as we go to 95, it should be about five years later. So, so if, we, if we call this 1990, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, so based on uh, just counting, it looks like that ought to be 95. Now, you, you need to be thinking to yourself, does that make sense then with the other information in the wording of this problem? They were talking about a player's strike. What's going to happen if a bunch of the season is gone? I mean, players are not going to be working as much. Players are, are going to have a lower uh, amount of money there. Uh, because they just don't have as many games. So it looks to me like around year 15 is is where that strike happened. Okay, so again, identify where the 95 salaries appear in the graph and explain how you can spot them. Well, we got lower salaries uh, because they didn't play as many games. And also, if we correctly identify 1990, we can count. Okay, and then 22 says, analyze the general patterns in the graphical model and give your thoughts about the long-term implications, might, what they might be for the players, team owners, and baseball fans. So I guess the thing to, to look at is, uh, you know, take a peek at what's going on with the graph. Overall, what's happening with the salaries on this graph? What, what's going on? You know, look at the overall trend and... Shockingly, you know, they're, they're going up. So if we consider what happens to the players, well, looks like uh, for players, overall the salaries are going up. Uh, for owners, from their perspective, the costs are going up. And then uh, for fans, um, sounds to me like ticket prices uh, are going up as well. I mean, money, money, money is what this is all about. Uh, so in terms of long-term implications, now obviously there could be interventions, uh, things like uh, salary caps and all that kind of stuff could change. So, all right. So. This is just about exploring the data from a graph. We have uh, a graphical model, a graphical uh, uh, arrangement of information here, uh, and we're looking at the graphs, and we can answer a lot of questions as we you know, think about the situation. So keep in mind you need to think about the situation. Okay, let's, let's look at another example. Uh, this is, again, modeling, and what we're trying to do is go from situation to, uh, to numbers, to a picture, a graph, and then also uh, from there then to uh, equations. And, and the goal is to be able to make uh, pr predictions and stuff. So this example comes from page 77 in the pre-calc book. Uh, again, this is the uh, demand awaits Foley, Kennedy, functions and graphs pre-calc book. And we're looking at number 52, uh, which is about cell phones. Now again, keep in mind this, this book is 2001, and so the data that we're looking at uh, happens to be from 1988 to 1997. And so things have obviously changed quite a bit since 1988 in terms of cell phones. So, I mean, just you can take that wherever you want. Um, Part A said, uh, for this then says, oh, oh sorry. Uh, so let me just kind of buzz through here. Uh, the years 1988 through 1997 are listed in the table. The number of subscribers are listed and average local monthly bill. Now, uh, in a minute, we're going to do some work in the calculator with this in the TI-84, and I'm going to summarize much of this data. Like So for, for the years in, in the book, it suggests numbering from zero up and and so there are actually uh, looks like 10 different years here so 0 uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so worth noting that we're just going to number those okay um, also worth noting that I am mega lazy and I'm going to type these in in millions 
Okay, so when I do that, this is going to be 2.0, this is going to be 3.5, this is going to be 5.3, etc. And for average monthly bill, uh, I did go ahead and type in that the standard, uh, you know, what you see there, it's just dollars and cents, it wasn't that big of a deal. Okay, uh, now the first thing it asks us to do is graph the scatter plots, <coughs> and, uh, and they want both number of subscribers and average monthly bill as a function of time, which when it says a function of time, okay, so l let's just say uh, bill as a function of time. Okay, that, mean, when, that means that time is going to be the independent variable. In other words, time is like x, horizontal axis. Okay, and, and then the bill, or in other words, the money, will be the dependent variable, or in other words, y, or on the vertical axis. Okay, so, and, and another way to say that is, is the bill depends on the time. Okay, and in this case, we're, we're looking at how do the bills change as we look at different years. That's the goal, is, is how do those things change over time. Okay? All right, so what we're going to do is pull in the calculator, and uh, I did a little bit of cheating. Now, this, this can actually uh, track your... Pull that out of the way. Sorry about that. This can actually track my key sequence for me, uh, so that way you can see the exact keys that I am typing. And I'm going to push the statistics key. Okay, so you see it lit up red, and you see the screen that goes with that. And it actually will. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, now that's good. Um, so I'm going to go to edit. So I just push. I can either push enter or one. And now you're going to notice that I already have all my data in there, and I, I'm like, yeah, 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 nah, 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 cheat, cheat, cheat. Um, worth noting, I'm, I'm going to go under list four and just put some, some foo-foo data in there just so you see how to ha handle this. Sometimes uh, when you approach the calculator, there's stuff left over from last time, and you need to know how to handle that. So uh, I'm going to go uh, to clear a list. Now, I'm not going to clear a list that I already have in here that I want to use right now. This is just, just for your benefit. So I'm going to go up to the top of the list where it highlights the name of the list. And my goal is to clear this list. Please do not, 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 not hit delete. Okay? So if you're trying to clear a list, not delete. Okay? Do not hit delete. All right, now so let me see if I can get rid of the, what I just wrote here. Uh, clear ink. Thank you. That's what I needed. Okay, so I'm going to try and clear this this list uh, up here, right here, that guy. Okay, so I highlighted the name of the list, and I'm going to push clear, not delete. Now, if you notice, right in this area, it actually uh, did clear the, the entries that were here. Okay, now the problem is, is it, it's not clearing up here. So what I need to do is basically just hit enter, and that'll do it. Or you can click the down arrow. That'll work. Okay, so if you need to clear a list, that's how you do it. Okay, worth noting then, I have list one is my years. And as I stated, they are listed in order just zero to nine because there were ten years. Zero is one of them. So the rest would be one through nine. Okay, and then in millions, list two. Okay, so list two is in millions, and then list three is in money. Okay, so that's dollars and cents, just like it was listed in the table. Now, the first thing it asked me to do is, is to whip up a little scatter plot. Now, you could graph this by hand, and it wouldn't take that long. I just want you to, uh, you know, see how to do it in the calculator. Uh, so, right above the, the Y equals button, it says stat plot. So, I'm going to do second stat plot, so second y equals, and it says right now all my plots are off, and this this plot one, I'm going to go ahead and use that, and what I'm going to do is just hit enter, or you can hit one, and I'm going to turn it on, so I'm going to hit enter to turn it on wherever the cursor is, and then uh, arrow down, and that first choice is a scatter plot, this is like a line graph and a histogram and a box, uh, there's modified box plot, box plot, and uh, normal 
uh, probability distribution. Okay, so I want lists one and two, so this is good. Uh, list one is my X list, so list one, if you recall, is the year, and then list two uh, is the number of subscribers. Okay, so we're just going to go with this. This just shows what kind of marks it's going to put on my scatter plot. So what, what's it going to show? Okay, all right, and then I'm going to push graph because this bad boy is ready to rock. And wow, there are actually some numbers on there. I'm kind of shocked. Uh, keep in mind that our numbers are in millions, so we're graphing points like 0, 2, 1, 3.5. You know, if I, I don't know if I can peek back at that table. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's a little sluggish, but it's working. All right, so so what we're actually graphing here, looking at is, um, so 0, 2.0, and there it is, 0 and 2.0, okay? Now, we're not seeing this bottom stuff, though. Like, this is supposed to be 55.1, and we're not seeing it up here, and the question is why? Well, think about your window. We're not counting up to 55. We're only counting up to 10. So let's maybe go up to 60. And then from there, uh, let, I don't want my X scale to put a little ticky mark every single uh, one of these. So uh, I'm going to count by tens. Well, you know what? I'm doing the wrong thing. I want this to go. Let's go. Uh, this is supposed to be a year. Sorry. Let's go 0 to 15 by ones. And then these are the ones that need to be like uh, from from uh, two up to 55. Or so I'm going to go from zero to 60 by tens. There you go. Even in a recording, we can biff. So, all right, let's hit graph now. Ah, there we go. Wow, that's kind of cool. Uh, probably worth noting that uh, does that look linear? I don't think it looks linear to me. It does not look like a line. All right, let's go ahead and graph the other set, too. And, and then the only glitch in this is that graphing two things at the same time when they have different units may or may not be that useful. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on like we did before. But this time I want year, and I want um, the average monthly bill. So I'm going to do L3. Now, worth noting that L3 is down here above the 3 button. Okay, so let me go back up because I hit enter inadvertently, and I'm going to do second and three, and does it look like L3? It does, and I don't want the same mark because I want to be able to tell them apart. Okay, all right, so let's hit graph. Wow, that's interesting. So I got four of the data points showing up. Now again, look at the numbers in here. Whoa, hello, I didn't want to do that. Okay, so... Anyway, look at look at the numbers um, in that last column. They're like between 42 and roughly 100. So let me go back. And again, I'm going to change my window. So again, x values are really from they're the same. So I can leave those alone. And y values I need from 42. Well, zero is in there. That's fine. And I need basically up to 100 now. So I'm going to change that to 100. And we're good to go. Hit graph. Sweet. All right. Well, so a couple things. Well, this is jerky. We'll get used to that. All right. So a couple things to note here. This was the subscriber numbers. It does not look linear. Not a line. This is the monthly bill, the cost. That's interesting. The cost is coming down. Uh, and it looks pretty linear. It looks pretty much like a line. Okay, you could argue that it might not be exactly a line, but hey, in real life, that's pretty good. All right, so part A says graph the scatter plots, uh, letting time equal the number of years after 1988. So zero would be 1988. Uh, one of the scatter plots. Uh, quickly, uh, clearly suggests quadratic model, and they ask you to then find uh, an equation for that, and then you're supposed to superimpose. And uh, so the rest of this is really finding the specific numbers on this, and we can do, we we will do some of that in class. Um, 
I'm not going to spend a lot of time here because this, this is already going longer than I, I wanted it to. So uh, I think we're going to stop at this point, and uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, and again, uh, the big focus here is going from a, a context, a real situation, uh, to math. And you can use, uh, again, tables of values to help organize the numbers. You can do a graph to ha get a visual representation of the numbers. And then the goal, ultimately, for most situations, most math classes, and then most applications uh, in life would be then to process this into an equation. And then once you have an equation, then you can predict things. You can say, well, you know what? I know we don't have data for that year in between but perhaps uh, we can use an equation to approximate what it ought to have been. Or maybe we can make a projection for the next year or two. Be careful about going beyond that. So thank you very much, and we will see you in class. Bye-bye.